Previously on Homesteady. We have a very big announcement to make here at a Homesteady. We're gonna stop with all animals completely, get rid of all the livestock on the farm because we've realized Despite enjoying that, we're really good at producing one thing more than um, the, the thing we produce best is mud. So from now on, this channel, we want to focus on the organic, free-range production of mud. We don't want to do CAFO mud. We don't want to raise our GMO mud. This is going to be a GMO-free, organically raised mud. We probably won't get official organic status, but we're going to be like beyond organic mud farm. We're drowning in mud, everybody and we have to address this problem. This is just, it's, yeah, it's not good. We've talked about this problem in previous videos. This barn is in the lowest area in the whole property and all the water comes here. And now that we have cows, manure, hay, it's getting mucked up creating like a sludge layer so the water's not going into the ground. It's really bad for cows to have their feet in that. Uh, goats too, they can get foot rot from that. So we're attacking this problem. Gutters, putting in drainage, uh, footing drains, French drains, just uh, using some geotextile fabric and gravel to solve the problems. So follow along in this playlist as we solve our drainage issues. It hurts. So little rubies are only additional dough. She will be staying here. Buckwise, we got this guy, Bomber, who is a beast. Bomber, he's huge, especially compared to our little guy, Burke, here. Both bucks. Burke's actually older, but Bomber's much bigger. All right, guys, go play. We have three does. We do not need three bucks. Plan number one is to sell whichever buck we decide not to keep. We've had a strange development the last day here with our goats. Meanwhile, the babies are over here doing just fine. The babies are very healthy. Everyone's, the babies are doing great. It's, it's our mamas who kitted who are really taking it the worst. Gizmo died today. Let's dive in. <sighs> Dawn Patrol. It's like two times in a homesteading life where you're actually often going out in the dark, I find, and that's when you have births anticipated, and that's a happy time, and then when you have death anticipated, and you're checking on the health of an animal, so that's a sad time, and that's right now. I am going out to check on Lacey, uh, I feel like this is a big check. I feel like if she's alive when I check on her right now, then there's hope and she's gonna get better. And I feel like if she's, well, I mean, obviously if she's dead, she's dead. But what I mean is if she's, uh, if she's up and eating, then uh, I think there's hope. And if she's like down this morning, then yeah, anyway, let's go check on her. It's too early, I can't really frame my words right. Ah. place. Hey, look at that. You're up. That's a good sign. She's up. Alright, well, the 
saga continues. Lacey's up. Uh, still looks bad, but she's up. She's a fighter, man. I don't know. This is one of those things where time will tell. Oh, that's good. It's gone. <laughs> good, it's gone. And my it's funny. Gone. Now I can walk. Nice. It's funny how a decision on the homestead sometimes that you've been like working over and over and over suddenly can be made for you so quickly. Uh, yeah. We were trying to figure out which bucks to keep for breeding this year. It was a hard choice because they're all so pretty. <laughs> but then the decision was made for us. Bomber was not only a beautiful looking buck, but he was big and strong and he probably would have been ready. Well, I think he will be ready to breed this year. Still will be, <laughs> just not to any of our girls. The only doe that he could have bred was Gizmo. And with Gizmo dying, now... Ruby's his half-sister, half Lacey's his mom, so we're gonna send him along to his next breeding home. And uh, we've decided that of Bark and Thorin, we actually bought Thorin for the purpose of breeding. I don't think Burke will be ready to breed this year. He's not as big as Bomber. No. So we've, uh, we're gonna send Burke on to his new breeding home too, which means we'll keep Thorin. And right now he's at my aunt's, helping to service her does. So we're gonna be back to two does right now. But she's good. Right now we, we've needed to minimize on the goat front. <laughs> we've got some we've got some big infrastructure changes to do on the homestead this fall. Hold on to it. Yep. You gotta hold on to that back. My dog. Hold the back. You got enough for you mommy? Yep, Just up enough. Hello. Can I come in? Hi, Rips. Hey. Here you go. Yeah. Is it clean? Yeah, God. I'm just going to bring him straight through. All right. Open the back. 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 Open the back
Here, here, Berkey. Woo. Beautiful boy, big, big buck. He'll go and uh, have fun on someone else's farm. Oh, ow! Guess he's coming through. You're coming too, Bert. Oh, no, he's been a skate artist. So much trouble, this guy. Off he goes. Beautiful eyelids. <laughs> All right. It's always a sad day to say goodbye to uh, animals that you've worked with and cared for. But they'll have a nice life at their new homes. And uh, freeing up this paddock will be good for us because we have a big project planned. Partially due to what's been happening here, what happened with Gizmo. Uh, let me tell you about this big project. What we're getting into here. We have this giant pile of gravel that we had dropped off. This is actually one of four giant piles. We have 80 plus tons of rock material here. The honest truth is we don't know what killed Gizmo. Without doing a necropsy, we would not, uh, it's just impossible to know what killed her. And it happened so fast, we weren't able to do any tests. We weren't able to get her fecals to a vet. It just, she was walking around and she was dead. And, and when that happens, you just gotta ask yourself, try to figure out what happened. We've heard from our different mentors, it could have been milk fever, it could have been a barber pole bloom, it could have been meningeal worms. We've been racking our brains trying to figure it out just so we know how to deal with our other goats. But no matter what killed her, uh, one thing is for certain. Going forward, we want to make sure that this homestead is as worm proof, worm resistant, uh, and just disease resistant as possible. And a problem that we've talked about a lot this last year here on the property is the wetness around the barn. This barn is built at the foot of a big hill. It's flat here and then it goes downhill on the other side of the barn. But where the barn is located is at a low point on the property. And so the water comes flying down this hill, sits down in the barn. It didn't matter before when Case was here as a young girl and when she was here with her parents and when they were here because they mostly had small livestock. But with the goats and the cows trampling in the mud, it creates a lot of wet, mucky earth which doesn't allow the water to seep down into the ground. And water causes diseases. So whether or not it was a worm issue, a meningeal worm, a uh, barber pole worm that killed gizmo, uh, eliminating wetness will eliminate a lot of your worm problem and having some good solid dry lots with zero vegetation will be a safe place to bring animals when we are experiencing problems whether it's with the actual pastures condition if it's too wet out there if it's a too hot and humid time of year we're having a fall right now that is unfortunately really a good fall for meningeal worms it's not been too cold there's slugs around all this wet stuff we have to get rid of this problem. We don't want to risk any of our future livestock. So moving these bucks to a new home is allowing this paddock here uh, to be empty, which means we can get started on this big project of improving the drainage around our barn. And you'll be seeing that in the upcoming videos. And just like that, we are down to two goats. <laughs> There's that. What would you call it? There's always, it's tinged with sadness. But we're also really proud of our daughter because even though she didn't, she told us hands down, no, I don't want you eating our goats. And we, as parents, respected that. Yeah. She was totally up for selling them. So she was really excited. She made her first goat sales today. And that money's gonna go into the donkey envelope. We've talked in the past about how my that's, daughter that's... wants to get a donkey. And this, this was all part of uh, with our kids and, and animals on the homestead, we like them to kind of prove themselves, learn, see if they can handle it, see if we feel like they're ready. And this whole year of goats was leading up to that. And uh, I don't think we're ready to get a donkey tomorrow, but but this was another step of, well, can we sell some livestock? And uh, I don't think she was, 
I, I think she was a little sad to see see him go. Yeah, I think anything you raise, even if you raise it knowing they're going to another home someday, which we did with the boys. We knew we couldn't keep everybody. Yeah. It's still a little sad. Yeah, it's always a little sad to say goodbye to your animals. But she was excited to know that she was earning some money towards her donkey. And uh, I think this first year of her helping out with the goats, I think we learned a lot. We had some ups, we had some downs, but overall I think it was good. Yeah. So now we have Lacey and Ruby here still. Still working with Lacey and getting her back to, to good health. She's, she's looking better. She's looking spunkier. She actually jumped up on the... Uh, like her, door, like her old self. And uh, soon we have this, we're going to be starting on this big project, putting in our our dry lot. And yeah, I'm very excited about that because it's only October 3rd and it's it's already mud. It's a yeah. mud pit back there already. We haven't got that much rain this year, but, well, we haven't got that much rain in the last couple weeks, but I think it's already so saturated. Yeah. It's mud. We're keeping all the, the animals off of it. So we're really down to like half a paddock right now so it works out that that we got the boys off of it so we can keep Lacey and Ruby in the stall right now so they can stay nice and dry yeah so they're in the stall and uh, that opens up one whole paddock which means I can actually start working with the tractor prepping for this big job ordering the other materials other than the gravel and a little later on in this month you're gonna see us start this big project of dry lots and <laughs> And uh, what, what do they call that? A uh, livestock pad? Uh, yeah, well, no, what do they call the... What's the system called? It's not as cute as baby calves. But it's sure as practical it's for so you practical. other homesteaders and yeah. farmers out there to see see what we're doing. So we'll keep showing you that baby calf. Though. Quick note before you watch this video, or actually it might be at the end. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this note. Uh, Aust here from the future. The video you are watching has been recorded, edited, days previous. I'm filming this though, right here, right today, and putting it in this video, because I want to tell you a quick message. So, this Lacey situation. First off, thank you so much for all your support. It's been so nice to come and read the comments every day, the well wishes, all of you who are rooting and hoping that Lacey pulls through this just like we are. Uh, we really appreciate it. You've been so understanding, you've been so supportive, and we can't thank you all enough. There's been lots of suggestions. Hey, why don't you guys do this? Why don't you try this? Why aren't you doing this? I just wanted to remind you of how we produce these videos so you realize that we're not ignoring your suggestions uh, it's just gonna take a little time. So let's pretend this here is the day we filmed a video. Let's pretend it's Monday. Uh, Monday I filmed the footage. By the time I'm done sorting it, uploading it, editing it, exporting it, and I upload it to YouTube, it could be a few days to a week later. And then, then the video is live here. Now people start commenting. We read their comments. We read the research and links that they share. We talk about it, and now here we actually take some of that advice and, and do some new things and film it, and then here is when we edit that, and then here we work on and then finally we upload that video where we took your advice that you left on this video. <laughs> so we're not ignoring your advice. We already have done some new things with Lacey that you haven't yet seen. You'll see in the upcoming videos and we're still working with her. We have some really good news. We got a vet to come a lot sooner, so you'll see that in an upcoming video. This video, you don't see any of this, but it's coming. Thank you for the advice. We've done a lot of the things that you've suggested. We've learned so much thanks to your comments, and we really want you to continue commenting. You're helping us through this really hard time, and we are listening. So thank you. I just wanted to say that now. Enjoy today's video, or if you already saw today's video, uh, stay tuned for the upcoming ones where we're doing new things. Thanks to all of you.